it's raining cats and dogs. Only shooting stars break the mold. Hello everybody and welcome to Brawl Stars. I'm Amy the Amazonian and today I'm playing Rin and Sari Inseparable. It's a dog and a cat that makes cats and dogs. Most of this deck though is cats because um, there's a lot more cats in Arena than there are dogs, which is, you know, just kind of pro-cat propaganda out here. We all know that the pretty kitties are the best ones, but there's some good puppies out there too. Rin and Terry Inseparable cares about casting cats and dogs, and the more cats and dogs you have, the more damage and life gain you get off of Rin and Sari's activated ability, which is Naya Colors, tap, and dealing damage equal to the number of dogs, and gaining life equal to the number of cats. Because Rin and Sari is both a cat and a dog, the floor of that ability is one, so you're always able to deal one damage with that ping. This deck also has a good number of changelings in it because those are both cats and dogs, especially if you have something like Maskwood Nexus out, so everything is both a cat and a dog. This deck is running very few planeswalkers and a whole lot of things that help us draw extra cats and keep playing these kitty cats so we can get out more and more cats and dogs and blast our opponents Face. We also have some, uh, I'll say some finishers like Jetmir in the deck, who is a cat, and a lot of cats that buff other cats like Kahira and Feline Sovereign. These are great cards to have, especially if you have something that rewards you for having buffed up cats and dogs like Sovereign Okaneka How. When you attack in, you get to buff up the already buffed up creatures to make them even stronger. It's pretty nice to have some good synergy with your cats and your dogs. So we're going to take Rin and Sari into the queue, and we're gonna woof, woof, meow. Zuri Claw of Progress. Uh, I believe that this is the Experience Counters one. It is. This is Simic Weenies and a little bit of Proliferate. You get to have little creatures that get even bigger based on the amount of Experience Counters you have. You get experience by having a Zuri out, and, uh, I don't think I can keep this hand because there's two lands and no ramp. This is a little bit better. We got a dog. We have a halfling. Throw this down. The delighted halfling. She's just happy to be here. I, I also built an Azuri deck. It wasn't great. It's probably a little bit better now. I'm sorry, Elvish Mystic, but you can't be allowed to live. Always uh, tell the elf to get lost. Always tell the elf to get out of here. Bring out an uncounterable Rin and Sarah using this delighted halfling. This does them give them the potential to get more plus one plus one counters on things though, which is good for any of the proliferates that they have in the uh, in the deck. But first, they need a creature to get there. Hopefully we'll be able to kill those creatures with Rin and Sari. It's a cute animation. I know, it's like the little collars of the cat and the dog. So cute. Ooh. Kind of like attacking their face or setting up for double tokens when we catch uh, this first dog here, the selfless savior. Because they're in Simic colors, they're more likely to be bouncing things than they are to be killing things. Four mana now, Izuri, Claw of Progress. And now I think it's time for us to uh, take a look at their hand. I'm going to use Invasion of Gobakan to see what they've got. Skydiver, Inexorable Tide, Reclamation Sage, I get the Soul Cauldron, and Orenclex. Of these, I'm actually going to tax Reclamation Sage because I really don't want them killing the flipped invasion. I'm going to name Cat here. Meow. And I'm going to swing, and I'm going to swing. Yes, please, one Light Shield Array. If uh, anybody's keeping track, we have two dogs and three cats. 
If I had named um, dog, I could have also held up the fairy's protection. They get a experience counter. They can also put a plus one, plus one counter. Oh, look at that. Experience. No creatures currently in the graveyard other than Elvish Mystic, but Elvish Mystic still means they could make these tap for mana. Tapping for mana is good. Means you can cast more spells. An overwhelming number of small dudes. Dude. Putting lots of counters onto the Simic Skydiver up here. They have a nice chunky flyer. 4-4. Four, four. You want to use up your map token? No? Okay, cool. Ooh, I ganjo. Going to swing in again with Rin and Sari. Is the Zuri just small creatures? Yeah, these don't have to be uh, non-tokens. You actually, uh, I'd say one of the best cards with Azuri I found was, um, the Cat Chariot, Essica's Chariot. Since it gets you two little critters. They can proliferate on demand for just five mana. They can get double counters with Vorinclex. They could proliferate with spells being cast off an inexorable tide. A ravenous pursuit would deal some nice damage. Vorinclex Monstrous Raider! Going to turn that one experience into two counters. Oh, are you sure? They're not sure. We just attack it next turn, and we've got a lethal swing. GG, Azuri. Pentlaza, son favored. It's a dinosaur that discovers more dinosaurs. It's going to have dinosaurs in it. You shouldn't be surprised when they start playing. You guessed it. Dinosaurs. Uh, I kept this hand because of the Cabaretti Rebels, because this is just a really great card. Other than that, this deck's going to have a little bit of an awkward start. I don't have any ramp. Um, oh, look at that. Now I do. Uh, so I wouldn't be able to play any of the other cards in hand, but I'm hoping that we can, like, Cabaretti Revels into Ridden Seri or Leon and War Leader and uh, just start going wide at them. Ooh, we're gonna go Cabaretti Revels. Play Esper Sentinel. It's not going to find anything. I have zero, no zero cost creatures in my deck. And now, if they play a non creature spell, we might get to draw a card. Wouldn't that be nice? Ooh, they're ramping. Do you pay the one? They do pay the one. Hmm. War leader over Rin and Sari. Oh, puppy dog! Bark, bark! It drew me a land! Good doggy! Oh my gosh, what a good puppy! I'm gonna pet you. Pet, 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 pet. Hi, Pet Laza! Ooh, into Invasion of a Quarry. I'll probably put that in hand because you want it to tutor. Uh, I will get out Rin and Sari next. Okay, I uh, I can guess. I guess I'll hit the Wolf Willow Haven. I was like, I don't think I have a target for it. I do, a very small target. Cast a cat, get a dog. And swing in with this. We're going to get two more 1-1s one -ones attacking in. So they can choose if they want to trade with the war leader, block a dog, or block a cat. They've got a windswept heath. I'm actually surprised they have Nykthos in their deck. My guess is their deck is mostly green because green offers so much good ramp. Like playing Llanowar Elves and cards like that. Invasion for X equals four it means I do get to draw a card, but what four drop do they get? 
There's a lot of four drops that are very good at blocking. I'm wondering if it's like Ripjaw Raptor. There's also a... Oh, it's a five drop that deals one to everything. Okay, Wingbane Bantasaur is another four or five. Um, they get either Naturalized or Savage Stomp into hand. They are tapped out for this turn, but they have a ton of devotion in green now. Invasion of Gobakan lets them look at my hand and exile a card. That card will cost two more. So what do you hit? The Chariot, the Sun, or the Call? They put a Stomp into hand and they hit the Call. How much dog? One, two dog. I'm going for War Leader's Call. I'm just swinging with everything. <laughs> War Leader's Call is great because it's an Anthem and Impact Tremors at the same time. Since we get the two additional attacking cats of Leon and War Leader, we got so much damage. Enough to ruin this dino's day. GG, Pantlaza. The Ladriel of Lothlorien. You scry, you reveal, you put lands into play. I will keep this hand. It has a little bit of ramp, a little bit of ramp, and cats and cats and cats. I love the part with all the cats. It makes me happy. Temple Garden, getting us that beautiful Selesnia mana. Ooh, wow, they get the Maze Vine Tome. That will allow them to scry right away when Galadriel enters play. Uh, I don't really have to worry about counter spells here because I got a Cavern of Souls. And I will use the Cavern of Souls on Racketeer Boss. I only have one creature in hand, so I can only give the buff to this Lion Sash. That's better than nothing. Still nice to have a two mana three two. Big old cat man threatening a guy in a jewelry store. You gonna reveal? Well, are you? Racketeer boss swinging in. Love it. Bring out the pack leader. If I wanted to, I could also go for like the lion sash to ramp up into immortal sun. There's not that much ramp, but Racketeer boss being a cat is very convenient for this deck. Pack leader is nice because it means that we can attack in freely with Rin and Sari because whenever this attacks, you prevent combat damage that so will be dealt to dogs you control. So if these two are attacking together, then they're very happy. Very happy puppies and kitties. I wish it would also buff cats, but... This is a dog. Ooh, Invasion of Perulia. It does scry. They scry, they reveal it's a land, they reveal again it's a land! Would you like to scry again? Nope, just generating lots of mana off that Lotus Cobra. Ooh, and a scoop bug! Gonna turn uh, all those landfalls into a lot of bugs. Kind of like uh, using up this lightning bolt on Scoot Swarm here. I think that is going to be the right thing to do. Uh, so that is what I will do. That or, like, the Lotus Cobra. But I don't think we can go that, like, as wide as the Scoot Bug. So I won't even try. Pack Leader, swing on in. Oh, Merit Lage is Slumber. So this is why they have Snowlands. This is something I actually haven't put into my Galadriel deck because I fear it dearly. If you get a snow land off of your scry and your reveal, you get to scry again, which with Merit Lage's slumber means you can go deep. Very, very deep. You can just keep on digging deeper and getting lots and lots of triggers for Galadriel. What's the backside of this? Is it a rhino? No, it's a beast. It looks kind of like a rhino. It's got a horn. Oh, and a time warp. Sure. Delphir and Void is a land that scries, and if it scries and finds a land, perhaps they'll have even more 
No, it's Jace. But they can use the Maze Mind Tome to draw Jace and do more scries. Howdy, Jace. They did kick Jace because you should always kick Jace. And they're going to use him to scry. Two to the top? Uh-oh. I don't like that. Is it two lands? Hedge Mage, which can surveil. Not a scry, but kind of close. And then they could put that card in hand using Jace. Ah, more scry off Omen of the Sea. Treasure map does offer more scries. Meow. Aw, fine. I wanted to use this to uh, kill some of their things next turn. That is not going to happen. I guess the Lion Sash, because it makes the treasure. This is a good one. And then we could either do Ridden's Harry or Essica's Chariot. I'm going to go for Essica's Chariot. Loads of critters. And you might have a free block on one of these, but you don't have a free block on both of them. It's not really free, because this is indestructible while it's attacking. I shouldn't say indestructible. Damage is prevented to it. Nice. They choose to protect Jace. So there's no more Lotus Cobra. They're not getting quite as much crazy mana. Also, playing the Essica's Chariot here is nice because it doesn't trigger Rin and Sari. Ah, but they'd rather give me a land than let me continue here. I want something that has white mana and is untapped. Uh, I am willing to pay a little life just to get extra fixing. But just the planes is fine, too. I feel like we're already pretty good on fixing. Boop. And this way, I can exile something from a graveyard. Like Scoot Swarm or Lotus Cobra. They scry. And oh my gosh, how they scry. And do you reveal? No. They put card in hand. Ah! River's Rebuke. They killed Jace for a River's Rebuke. Alright, uh, I guess I'll use up my one mana here and I'll exile Time Warp. So you can't do the Time Warp again. Just in case. These will go back into my hand. And I'm just hoping I get a land on top of my deck for the Immortal Sun. This will flip, because I think they'll attack it. And they have another Scry. There's so many Scrys. Raiding Pool, more land. They haven't hit a Snow Land, except for, I think, one since they put this into play. All these nice non-basics. This flips over. And now they have a 4-4! I guess it, it gets me lands. I'll take it. Um, grab some of that good, good green stuff. Green and white. Put the white in tap. Play this. Go for the signet. Slashing and smashing. Once more, they scry using that treasure map. Scrying to the bottom. Still going to reveal, though. At least I would. Nissa. Oh, they have five, six forests currently. Mm hmm. Noted. I need this immortal sun in play now. Now. I need it. I need it. In play yesterday. 
They're almost at 10 snow permanents. They almost have Merit Lage. Hi, Nissa. That's terrifying. Thank you. Now, excuse me. I need to go hide in a little bunker. Um... Either jump block or make this my Teferi's protection turn. I guess I can take one more hit. Boop. So these do not have passive abilities, so I don't have to worry too much about it. Ooh, Temporal Anchor is going to let them manipulate those scries and then put the cards they scried to the bottom of the deck um, in exile where they can play them. It's very interesting if you're playing a scry deck. Oh, the Rond! Hello, the Rond. How many bamboo groves on the bottom? It's a critter. I'll take eight. Thanks. Merrily to slumber is just like, I'm gonna wake up any day now. You sure are, buddy. You sure are. Pack leader. Jet Mia. Raise verge second. And these have uh, Vigilance, which is, I'm going to say, very notable, because it means I can both attack and use the activated ability. I'm not going to attack him with the Lion Sash, though. And right now we have a one, a two, a three dogs, which means I can deal three damage to something. Like you. Or you! I guess you'd need four damage. I'll still hit you. I might actually go for their face if I think I have lethal. Um. Still at nine. <laughs> Jetmere is one of the best cards in this deck. Uh. Oh. She doesn't transform until the start of their next turn. But still, uh, yeah, mm-hmm. That's happening, yes. Oh, you have a coma. It's very nice for you. Die, Galadriel. Puppy. Gain four life because we have one, two, three, four cat. Hi, Galadriel, welcome back. Uh are you attacking? It's cool if you don't want to. Let's get some stuff out of graves. Eat the scoot. Uh, any permanent gets us a buff. They get a snake. Are they going for an upkeep tap on Rin and Sari? Okay. I'm going to take out Arwen. We draw an additional card. Thank you so much. War leaders call. Buffs up my creatures. Black market tycoon. Just is a good creature. Gets us an extra dog token. Puts us to eight, but eight isn't nine. Ugh, I need one more. Let me just double check. Do I have lethal? 
Assuming this is blocked, that is blocked. We exile three more things from the graveyard. It's not lethal, but it's not the worst for us either. I think it's going to be better for me to stay back with the exception of like maybe swinging with the pack later. I could even like equip that, but we have this Teferi's protection. Merit Lage is terrifying, yes. But she doesn't kill me right away. She kills me soon, just not immediately. Yes, I can swing with the dogs with impunity, but they have blockers for them. Oh, actually, I guess they only had blockers for one. You're right. I missed that uh, because we have two dogs, the dogs would just be able to go in. And I guess we could uh, get in a wee bit of damage there. We want to encourage them to swing with everything. Yeah, she's a 2020. It's fine, guys. It's it's fine. We're drawing a card. Big lady. Big tentacle lady. Ooh, Tatiova is going to turn landfall into animating a land. Fun fact, if you animate one of the restless lands, they still have their on attack abilities. Elvish Mystic. Just a little mana dork. What's this final card? Oh, just a halfling. Hi, please attack me with everything. No, they're not attacking with anything. Okay, uh, let's keep eating up things from the graveyard. Uh, Arwen. Merit Lady to Slumber. Honk Shoe, Honk Shoe, me, me, me. And Jace. Ew. They get a snake. I should say a serpent. One, two, three, four dogs. So this time, I think we go for either Tatiova or the Rond. Or their face. Tatiova. We draw an extra. Come on, creature. You know, Felidar's Retreat will work. We're going to play Felidar's Retreat. That's going to give me landfall. Either make a creature or, more importantly, we could buff things up. But here, I think we want this because we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And you know what we get at nine? We get Jetmir's big ultimate buffins. And oh, what a kitty he is. We go to combat. All of these bad boys have text. So much text. You want to tap down something else? Tapping down Lion Sash. Um, I will use up... Actually, that's just until end of turn. So, yeah, that's fine. Our dogs are uh, damage prevented. Our cats are vulnerable, and remember, they can't kill something with Merit Lage, but I still gotta go in with all of these. Double strike. Save. This is very math as for blockers. Okay, well, let's do a little bit of math as for blockers. They have no first strikers. They have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 
Um, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 30, 30. And then this can only prevent one. These all got double strike. Eh. Yeah, maths for blockers. We'll see how much goes through on first strike. Kill the coma! Who's blocking the slab? The slab. Sure, whatever. Yeah, those are cards. Numbers! Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yes. Uh-huh. And once more with feeling. And we love it when it works. Cats and dogs working together. Gigi. The Ancient One. He might be a two-mana 8-8, eight, eight, but he can't attack or block until you have enough things in your graveyard. You need eight or more permanents in your grave. But that's not too hard to do if you get some good self-mill in the first few turns. But if you don't have that, he also has an activated ability where you can draw and discard and then mill yourself. So you're both putting things in a graveyard and putting things in the graveyard. Let's bring out a big kitty. Meow. This Lion Sash later might be very integral to this game because it will stop things in the graveyard from coming back and maybe even stop the Ancient One from being able to do anything. <gasps> no! They killed my kitty! And I don't even get to wear its skin as a coat. Which is a normal thing to say. That's... It's, it's on flavor for the card. Look, it, it, it's... It's supposed to be wearing its skin after it gives you indestructible. It's fine. I'm not crazy. I promise. Uh, they're just trying to get more stuff in the graveyard, so I'm not gonna block. The Stitcher Supplier hits. And I have to decide here if I want to go for this or go for some card draw and a little bit of graveyard hate. Uh, I will get down Rin and Sari inseparable. Doesn't get countered. Might still get killed and we swing in for two. Bone shards! Killing their Stitcher's supplier to kill Rin and Sari. What else is new? I'd rather they kill Rin and Sari in this specific circumstance than the Lion Sash, um, which I think is very, 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 very important to note. Here's the Sash. Oh, I should have manually tapped there to leave up more white mana. Deshauna's Tidebender. Um, going to counter the card draw ability. I'm gonna rip her apart. And swing in for two. Flip it or rip it. Ludwig! Necrogenius! Who melds himself with the beast and becomes whatever this thing is. You're looking great, sweetie. You're you're looking. You're, you're working. Ju you're looking fine. Uh, I'm going to use up some white mana to have some fun here. Let's go ahead and grab Shouldred. Yum 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 yum. Let's go ahead and grab China's Tide Bender. Yum 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 yum. Going to pass the combat, swinging with both of these. And I can either just keep holding up two more mana, or I can play Mondrak. I'm just going to keep holding up the mana. Because we know they have that virtue. A lot of this is just, oh yeah, I'm just maintaining my abilities. Bye, welcoming vampire. Gotta keep this Lion Sash alive in this matchup. That was not a permanent, so uh, the Ancient One cannot attack. It can now block until it can't. Uh, we're going to keep hitting creatures, Urtai. I don't care if it takes blood. It's worth it. Macaronis. Oh, 
Lion Sash out here getting thick. Uh, I'm gonna tap you and you for the invasion of Gobakan. Check out what they got in hand. Dark Ritual and Jace. I will exile the Jace, make him cost two more. I will go to combat. I will flip over to the invasion or go for face. I'm thinking, I'm thinking face. Hmm. Hmm. Putting us all on you, Lion Sash. This is a good cat. This is a good cat right there. This way, if they do take this turn to play Jace and mill themselves, I can stop the Ancient One from attacking. They also need X creature cards from their graveyard for the Ludwig ability. Oh, hello, Jace! They mill two cards and draw. I, before they can go to attacks, exile a permanent from their graveyard. <laughs> I'm also going to kill Jace. And then I'm going to exile the Jace. Go, kitty. Go, kitty. Go. Go to combat. Going right for him. Ludwig blocks. And I think we could go for Rin and Sari or Mondrak here. I just want to be careful with my tapping to make sure it's using up the least amount of white boyana possible to leave me open with just the one. So I can exile one permanent. The ever-flowing well. Ooh, assuming this mill's a permanent, I won't be able to stop the ancient one. It does. It mills multiple permanents. Cruelty of Gix! Gonna hit that Mondrag. Ancient one, you attacking or blocking? What's the dealio? Yeah, you have to block. Uh, we will hit Ludwig. And they leave. Because we'll be able to exile enough things from their graveyard to get a free attack right in at their face. We have one, two, three, four white mana. They only have uh, two above the threshold for the ancient one. So all we gotta do is go to combat, exile a couple things, and swing in for victory. GG! The Myco Tyrant gets bigger and makes lots of fungus when things go in the graveyard. He's a pretty fun guy, if I do say so myself. And he can be very scary if they get a lot of early ramp. Uh, they go first, but this looks like a pretty nice start. We got the Pilgrim, the Warhound, uh, which means that if they do any land-based ramp, we can actually get an advantage off that land-based ramp and get some for ourselves. Hello, oh, they're blowing us kisses. I'm gonna blow a kiss back. Smooches. Smooches for youches. They mill a card. It was not a permanent, so they don't descend. Not that they could play this this turn. Don't hurt my pilgrim! No, they pushed him! Oh man. And they have a hobbit. <laughs> I can either play the Spirited Companion or Invasion of Gobakan. I'm gonna see what they can cast next turn. Titania. Oh, that's kind of fun. And Beseech the Mirror. This or their commander would be what they're casting next. I'm going to tax the Beseech the Mirror because I just, I just hate tutors. I don't know. I just don't like these. Here's Myco Tyrant. Crack it up in their wooded foothills. That is a descend. They also descended off of the uh, Death Bonnet Sprout because it milled Argoth. Speaking of which, Argoth and Titania can meld. But Titania um, can't get the Argoth because Argoth's in the graveyard. Myco Tyrant, extra thick. A 
play the loyal warhound. Bark, bark. I'll get you a plains, my lady. Thank you so much, puppy. I love you, puppy. And Kemba's outfitter. I don't like beseech the children. No. I supple block Myco Tyrant. If they have another land in hand, uh, they could just play it again. But guess who doesn't have all the colors of mana she needs? I don't. Hi, Titania. Wait. Why is Mike in the graveyard? Why is Mike in the graveyard? Trying to flip this. I uh, take three from the tree lady. Okay, Nyx Weaver gets them lots of mill. Um, just play the Felidar Retreat. Meow. I think that the, um, the mill is real. Is it the beginning of Upkeep the Exile? Okay. On the flipped one. Oh, they ate my Felidar Retreat. And welcome, Salty Sea Dog. Oh, Snarling Gorehound is kind of cute. Rin and Sari. We get cards. We sit here. Still wonder why this isn't a graveyard. You gonna exile it? But bring it back there? They, by the way, so far they wouldn't have been able to replay it. So like, I don't think that that was a bad move, keeping it in the graveyard to try to uh, get the Death Bonnet Hulk to flip over sooner. Oh, nice! Now they can play all those lands in the grave, and they can even re-trigger the um, descend by using the fetch land. Smart. This also means that Titania will eventually be able to flip. Mm-hmm. Titania turns into big tree. Big tree lady. Trade ya. The good news is I can, um, reduce the number of lands in their graveyard. One. Two! A three! What lands? There have never been lands in the graveyard! Oh, by the way, we have uh, two dogs, three cats. For anyone who cares. Means I could kill the delighted halfling, I guess. It's like they can kill something too. Lion Sash is kind of the MVP. Urgent necropsy. Um. Okay, cool. I actually don't exist. So, yeah.
Not sure why the attack is happening. Oh, I think they forgot that it prevents all damage. I uh, thank you, I suppose. Red, green, green. Rhythm. Leaving up all the white mana that I can. Uh, Lion Sash. Your face. Looking at what's in the graveyard. Cards are in graveyard. Oh, I should have left open Rin, Rin and Sari's ability. Before this passes to the next part of the turn. Eat that up. Yum, yum, yum. It's to gain like three life. Ah, it doesn't matter. We're doing this. We, we want to keep hitting their graveyard. Lion Sash, you do you, sweetie. <gasps> Dr. Unks, I got your email. Thank you so much. You the best. I might be getting uh, a nice digital copy of the original Transformers movie. I'm pretty hyped. Hey! Don't destroy my stuff. This only gives my creatures hexproof and indestructible, but... I really do want to have a lion sash. Bye, mana. Lion sash? Seriously, MVP. They could still attack in with everything here. I would kill one thing as blocking. Okay, so just the gore, the, uh, gore hound. Uh, I will go... Uh, yum yum. And... Tasty tasty. I'm not gonna pay a life for that. Ooh, Faceless Agent. That's a dog and a cat. Woof woof meow. <gasps> Ooh. I think I'm going to save the Feline Sovereign for next turn. But right now... I think I'm hitting that Nyx Weaver. I ain't waiting. Pass the turn. It's one of those things where, like, it's an enchantment, so if we hit them with a cat... Combat damage, meow meow. I wonder what they're going to bargain and search for. It could be the one ring, or it could be Shuldred, or it could be um a really good mill card. It could be anything. It could even be oh, an actual cat or dog. Hello, young lady. Did you hear that I was playing kitties and doggies and you wanted to hang out with me? Everybody say hello to Scraps McGee, actual cat. Ooh, Raska. Oh, Raska can kill the lion sash. No! No! What's in your graveyard? I'm getting rid of it. Die. Scraps, look! Raska killed a kitty cat. That's you. Nice. Beautiful. You see that lightning bolt on top? We can go for the indestructible. This is going to be way more awesome. Uh, I'm going to pay the one. Animate you. Pop it. Yeah, wah! That just it gets me more life in and everything else. You and you attack Braska. You are so good, Scraps. What a nice young lady you are. Be 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 be
Yes, McGee, actual cat. Actual cat jewel. My co tyrant. Back into play. Have not descended yet. Oh, I require additional pylons. My commander is dead. And they were able to surveil two permanents. Ah, oh, man, they were lands. You want kiss? These both descend, and things happen. They surveil some more. It won't trigger these again, because it's already uh, the start of end step. But it can set up, like, more lands for the excavator. Yeah, Scraps, you're blocking the screen. I love that for you. You're such a good girl. My turn. Lightning bolt on the excavator. Either Rin and Sari or Big Indestructible. I think Rin and Sari. They, like us, are in top deck city. But they have um, Argoth. And Argoth is almost certainly going to trigger Myco Tyrant if they use it. Ooh, is Zoni! I love 40 evidence. Like, yeah, you're gonna get spiders. Bye, Scraps. I love you. They can surveil here. All right, we have one, two, three, four, five, six dogs, which means I can kill a Zoni or Myco Tyrant. I will go for Myco Tyrant because Azoni isn't getting any bigger. <laughs> the sacrifice for tokens, though, is pretty scary. I like that we have protection from dogs, by the way. It's actually slightly relevant here. Woof. Yeah, you, I'm talking to you. I wonder if they have removal. Is that a sorcery? It's not. Okay, so they have the ability to kill a creature here, like the Feline Sovereign. So if I want to block a Zoni, I have to really overblock. I could just wait until Rin and Sari next turn. Yeah, let's just take it. It's too scary with the Stalactite Stalker. Mike's back. And rather tyrannical. I tapped out, so I could also like try to kill the stalactite stalker so it can't be used as removal. Ooh, Okaneka how? Get out of here. If we could swing in with Okaneka Howe in this like 
Sovereign and Restless Prairie. We'll have buffs for everyone. Oh, hey, lady. You gonna bring back a Zoni? Maybe somebody else? Or just plus? Thankfully, we exiled a lot of good creatures. Mostly just a Zoni, um, Titania, Ramen Up Excavator. Hi, Azoni! She's in the zone. So many tokens. Oh, goodness. Permanents have been put into the graveyard. Is it time to swing in with, like, your bajillion menace tokens, or no? Oh, Mike's swinging in. All right. Uh, They have three mana up, so they do have the stalker ability. We can just take seven. Yeah, you kill the feline sovereign if you're gonna use it or you just keep letting it grow that works too ah they're doing it right now um okay how many dogs one two three four five six dogs either killing liliana or zoni here Could bring it up to uh seven with that. I think that's worth it. Move you back. So it's on top of my deck. It is not a cat or a dog. It's a friend. I could go for like the big Okanek attack a how attack here. I might die in the backswing if I do. Oh, but think about how buff my battlefield would be! And also, we are going to tap you for colorless and animate you. I know what I want, and it's the attack all button. Yo, that felt so good! Yeah, snarling gorehound, you can't block my kitty cats! And I guess the spiders just don't feel like it. We win? We win! Nice! Feather the Redeemed. Feather is a spells deck where you're casting spells that target your own creatures. And those spells can get kind of wild because you just keep getting to put them back into hand. Uh, very often there's a mix of protective spells and other good things. Uh, I guess I'm going to want something with green and white. So let's grab Temple Garden. It's, it's also usually got, like, Reckless Rage. Excuse me, wait a minute. I know that they buffed Thran Portal slightly so it doesn't come in tapped, but why are you playing Thran Portal in your deck? It still feels a damage to you every single time you use one of these. Hey, Killin' Fiend. Could exile you. Or I could draw a card. I asked for Sentinel. You're not a cat or a dog. All right, it looks like they played an unprotected feather. Um, that's exactly what I want you to do, because it means that I can put feather in jail. Feather goes to jail. She did commit some kind of a crime. That's why she had her wings bound. Boop. Yeah, I'm always surprised to see Feather played without protection, but that usually means that, like, they just don't expect my deck to have removal at the time, and they're just willing to risk it. Do you pay the one? They do. And the Hoplite gives a buff and gets a buff. Hey, Kilfiend, you coming at me? Come at me, bro. I'll block. Oh, 
Wow, burning the reckless rage without a feather out means they can't recast it unless they get something else. They're just trying to play aggressively. A lot of great cards for feather in arena. I'll use the pack leader. That is on white. Realm walker. Cat. Feathers back, all tapped out. Ooh, Jetmere. Well, I can go very wide this turn. That is my sixth creature, which means that we do get this nice double buff. The dogs, which by the way, all three of these are dogs. Also a cat. Um, <laughs> do not take combat damage. Nice. What deck would want Thran Portal? Yeah, maybe Rowan. Something where you're trying to deal extra damage to yourself. So they're buffing up Feather. And doing it again. Gaining a tiny bit of life. Those cards will return to their hand. And they do have enough mana to play them. But they might not want to swing in here. Uh, since they need to defend against Jetmere. Who is uh, apparently the real winner in these games? Rin and Sari inseparable. Come on out! You might be able to gain two life. But can you block all of these? They go to nine life. But they still take, uh, you know. 15 or so damage. A little more. Yeah, because of the trample. GG, Feather. Looks like it's the battle of the kitty cats with Nethroy and Rin and Sari. Oh my gosh, Kahira, this is like the first game you've showed up in since I built this deck. Hi, Kahira. Kahira buffs her cats. Not our dogs. I had somebody who was like, why not make Kahira your companion? Because then you can't play dogs. Dogs are an integral part of this deck. I should also mention, Nethroy is a reanimator deck, but it's reanimator based on the power of a creature. And some creatures actually have zero power, even if they enter the battlefield as, like, a 6-6. Six, six. I'm looking at you, Pelucridos. Uh, Nethroy is pretty cool. I, I like the uh, self-mill aspect of it. I've also played a Nethroy deck, but mine was a Nethroy and a Mori deck, which meant that I had only have creatures in it. It was really fun. Dang, you wall of blossoms and your ability to block Ragavan. Let's see what they got in hand. There is a uh, card that could have less than zero as its uh, power. Let's see, Egon, for the, probably for the backside. Gotta go for Faberow Elder. There's a monkey. Oh, ah! Yep, is it Scourge of the Skyclaves can have negative power? Which means that you can technically bring back more than 10 power with Nethroy? It's weird. Pride Sovereign. Paying lots of life for this one. This kitty cat makes more kitty cats. Meow. more cats, the bigger it gets. If I get an untapped mana source, I would love to play Kihira and then uh, attack with this and buff, or uh, like make the cats. That would make me happy because I would have so many kitty cats. Hey, Terry and Sturtle. Sacrificing the goose to draw a card. That is a nice new card for this deck. I did not get that thing. 
So do I want King of the Pride or Kahira? King of the Pride, baby! Let's go! Big meows! Sweet! Invasion of Gobakan flips over! They mill themselves. It was a Phyrexian tower. Oh, the Myco Tyrant player from earlier just stopped in chat. Hi, T-Node! Yeah, Teferi's protection is silly. It does prevent the combat damage. Nice. Now we got some lands. What if everyone was a cat? The most mana efficient maneuver. Besides, everybody wants to be a cat. Especially Ragavan. Ooh, bringing back all those lands! Love it! That's a lot of ramp. And now they can reanimate. Hello, I am also cat. Meow meow. I love this. This is the first game Kihira and Maskwood Nexus have shown up. Brendan's hair is like, wait, so what's gonna happen? Creature types are gonna happen. So many creature types. If they reanimate, the creatures they have to bring back are Hapatra, Goose, and Aftermath Analyst. They might wait if they have other stuff to play. Especially because you might not want to mutate onto the Wall of Blossom since it can't attack. Oh, Sam! Sam lets you sacrifice food to bring back historic creatures. And gets you food. Yum yum. Tasty tasty. I've actually seen some Samwise combos in Nethroi decks before. Just because it's the right colors for it. Hmm. Kihira? Everybody but the King of the Pride. Please let Ragavan hit. No, please, he's a good monkey. He just wants to do a little crime before this makes contact. I'm going to use this ability so I get two more kitty cats. I love that these are four threes because of the double buffins. Ah, it finally feels like a cat deck. And also Ragavan is here for some reason. Nethroi comes into play. And look at all these creatures they can bring back. So many. Because this is a Samwise Gamgee, they will be getting food for each of these creatures. Delicious. Yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. That's a lot of food. And a little bit of mill. Oh, nice. So with this Radadrabic, uh, they could actually bring that back from the graveyard using... Samwise's ability. Yep. That's Samwise Gamgee, all right. He looks a little more horrifying than usual. Okay, he looks a lot more horrifying than usual. He's really scary. Uh, I kind of like Cultivate. 
or Rin and Sari here. I don't like how much mana I've been missing, and I kind of like to hold up the Teferi's protection. Be not afraid, Mr. Frodo. I'm very afraid. Because these are all cats and dogs, like, I do have the potential of, um, like, sniping them down with Rin and Sari. Oh. But farewell in the graveyard. It's not a choice, they just have to mill one. Um... Okay, Crater Hoof Behemoth. That should, I'll say, encourage them to swing with everything. Which is great, because I have a Teferi's Protection. Otherwise, horrifying. Wall of Blossoms. <laughs> Let's go. And we phase out. I'm not here. It's a good thing I held it. Yeah, I would have been dead if I went to play Rin and Sari. And now I, I have the potential to kill them on the backswing. They can gain life. They have two, three, four, five mana, uh, which is en enough to uh, eat two food. That's enough to gain a lot of life, though. And they can also gain an additional life by sacrificing a creature. <gasps> oh my god, wait. If they had sacrificed Alenda there, they would have had so many tokens. Okay, what are the chances Realmwalker finds something useful off the top? Who knows? Uh, to combat. Everybody, go. They had tunnel vision. Yeah, it's their name. I still do have the light shield array, too. We hit. One, two, three, four. I'm gonna eat a delicious snack. Yum. Tasty? We're at 16! Which is exactly the same amount of damage we're dealing. GG, Nethroy. Definitely had a little bit of tunnel vision, but I am thankful to be saved by the debt to Fairy's protection there. That was huge. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you liked Ren and Sari inseparable. They are truly the best of friends, and they're the best of friends with all the other cats and dogs that we have in Arena, including my favorite cat and dog, Roaming Throne. Listen, okay? I ha I don't have a problem, I just really like Roaming Throne. If you're looking for the deck list for this video, it is in the description, and if you would like to request a commander for me to build, please let me know in the comments section. This was a requested commander, and it's been a really long time since I've built it, so I was happy to have an opportunity to update it. Uh, if you would like to request a deck, just, you know, let me know. Just tell me, hey, Amy, I'd really like to see you build Ashnod or Ingen Essica or Minskin Boo, Feather, Satsuki, Naeth, Alasia, Alayla, Yarek, Dina, Koth, or any of the other commanders that people have requested. I'm doing my best to get through as many of them as I can, but, well, you guys have requested a lot of commanders, so I've just been having my chat vote on them. And if you'd like to be in my chat, come on over to twitch.tv slash Amazonian, where I stream magic almost every single day. 
But if you're watching this on the weekend it comes out, I might not be streaming because I'll be at PAX East, which is a big old gaming convention. And if you see me at PAX East, say hi. Just be like, oh, hey, I love your brawl videos. And I'll be like, oh, somebody else likes brawl. How wonderful. Speaking of which, thank you so much for watching and have a brawlful day.